and welcome to this uh, Cyberpunk Red Jumpstart tutorial and in this one we're going to be talking about combat. So I'm the netrunner. I just went through, I've managed to break a system, I've got the door open and I go in and suddenly there's three guards standing there. The fixer's behind me with his pistol ready. It's time to roll initiative. So initiative is your reflex plus a d10. Very simple roll. So in this case I'm gonna roll, I got a 6. My reflex is 7, that's a 13. So my initiative is 13. All your players, everyone you're playing with, will roll their initiative and its highest goes first and the GM will roll for any enemies. So they will roll, get the order ready and then it's whoever has the highest will start first. So let's say that my 13 was the highest and I get to go first. In a turn, in combat, you can do two things. You can move and you can do an action. And an action is anything from attacking, grabbing, choking, um, pulling out a difficult weapon. So if you have, say, a pistol holstered at your side that's easily got, that's fine. You can pull it out as a free action. You can just pull it out and you're ready to go. But if you, say, have a minigun strapped to your back, it would be an action to get that out and get it round and ready to fire. Speaking is a free action, so you can easily shout to your teammates. However, keep in mind each uh, turn in combat is only around three seconds. So um, if you see players starting to give a monologue to you know, one of their teammates about tactics and stuff like that, your GM may step in at that point and be like, no, you're, you're taking too long here. Hurry it up or you know, you'll get the action taken off you because you took too long. It's about three seconds so you can shout short sharp commands at someone like you know get down or oh shit there's enemies. So speaking is a free action as is drawing a, a full weapon. So in my turn what I would do is jump in behind the door that I've just opened to get myself a bit of cover so that I'm not directly in line of sight. Because I'm in cover, I get a bonus to my um, armor. But we'll talk about that whenever it comes to their turn. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to shoot at the uh, the first person I can see. So we'll go down here to my weapon. I have a heavy pistol. So let's do that in. So I go to shoot. So it make me make an attack roll, which is my marksmanship and reflexes. So here... Reflexes is plus three, or sorry, my uh, marksmanship is plus three, and my reflexes are seven. So that's ten, and then I roll a d10, which is an eight, so an eighteen. Now, the difficulty to hit is based on range and the weapon. Your GM will have the uh, sheet for that in front of him. He will know how difficult that person is to hit. Generally speaking, for a pistol in close range, which you know, I, I am, it's fifteen. So a hit eighteen hits. And that means I get to roll damage. I know that my heavy pistol does 3d6, so I will roll my 3d6. Which isn't great, that was a 3, a 4 and a 1. So that's 8. Now, what happens now is it then gets compared to um, whoever I'm attacking's armour. So in this case we'll say that they have the same armour as me. Bring that down. And we'll say that their armour is 11. Now, I only rolled an 8, so that means it does not penetrate the armour. So I've shot at him, and his flak vest, his bulletproof vest, whatever, has just absorbed the shot. He is fine. That's my turn over. Then goes to someone else. So we'll say everyone has their turns, and it now goes to the guy that I just shot, and he's pissed. He's not happy I just shot him. So he turns and fires at me. Now, because I'm behind a wall, I actually have a bit more armour, and the GM will be aware of that. And depending on the type of wall, um, depends how much armor. So in this case, we're going to say that it's a wee flimsy sort of apartment wall. It's not not strong by any stretch. Let's say it adds a plus three. So he shoots at me, which is his reflexes plus marksman. We'll say, to keep things simple, that it's the same as mine, three plus seven. He rolls a ten. Now, if you'll remember from the last one, whenever you roll a ten, it's a critical success. It means he gets to roll again. So that's a 4, so that's 14 plus 10, 24. He hits, not a problem. And we'll say that he has a heavy pistol as well, which is 3d6. 
roll that, which was an 18. That'll hit. So because I'm behind a wall, it gives me plus three. I have effectively 14 body armor. Now what happens whenever the bullet gets through the cover that I'm hiding behind, that cover uh, protection decreases by one. So instead of giving plus three from any point onwards, it only gives plus two. And the same thing happens for my armor. And so he hits, it was an 18. So any damage above my armor is what hurts me. So because I have 13, it means I only take five points of damage. My body armor soaked up 11 points of the damage and the wall soaked up three. But because the attack went through, both of those now decrease by one. The wall now only gives me two points of protection and my body armor will now only give me 10 points of protection. And that is permanent until I go and get the armor repaired. If you have a tech in your party, they might be able to patch it up for to get a couple of um, points back into it. But I took damage and I took five points of damage. My uh, starting hits, which I don't have here, but we can see five body. So because I have five body, it means I have 25 hit points. I'm now down to 20. Okay, so I have, have 25 points of HP and I've taken five. That brings me down to 20. I am classed as lightly wounded. I'm not badly hurt, it's just a, just a flesh wound as it were. Because I'm still above half HP, I don't have any penalties. However, if let's say this battle goes south and I took a lot more damage and went below half hip, half HP, so below my seriously wounded threshold, I then start to take um, penalties because you know you're quite badly wounded. You've taken a few hits. You're trying to hold your guts in while shooting at someone. You get a minus three to all of your ability checks. Anything you do, you will have to add a minus three penalty. Now, mortally wounded is whenever you enter the death saving stage. So let's say it goes even more south, someone comes out and hits me with a shotgun and blows half my face off. It doesn't kill you, unless your GM states as much. But you will enter a death save state. Whenever you drop below one hit point, you will become in the death save state. And what that means is you will take a minus five to all stat checks, ability checks, um, apart from death saves. And at the start of your turn, you will need to do a death save. So as I said, your death save is just your body. So in this case, my death save would be five. And what I do is I have to roll a d10 and I have to make, um, or I have to have a roll under my death save. So the higher your body, the easier this is. So let's see if it kills me. It does, I rolled a nine. That means I die. There is not, it's not like uh, Dungeons and Dragons 5e where you have three death saves and you might be okay and you can stabilize. If you fail one death save, you die. Your character is dead. Let's say I saved, or let's say I, I succeeded and I rolled a four. Every penalty or every death save after that then gets a penalty and the penalty stacks. Each turn you go while you are in a death save state, you add a plus one to your death save roll. So if I roll a four, it would be five because I've already done one death save, I've went through that turn, I have a plus one penalty added and that will stack until either you die or you, uh, someone who has a first aid ability or just attempts first aid to get you back up to one HP and stabilize you. Okay, so let's say that my net runner is being badly injured and he's, he's bugged out, he's ran back and got himself into cover. Our solo, which is uh, sort of like your your enforcer, you know, your fighter, he's got an assault rifle. And what he wants to do, he wants to clear that room. He can do suppressive fire. Now, if you've played Cyberpunk 2020, it's different. The way this works is a 25 meter square in front of you, in front of where you're firing, gets filled with a hail of bullets. And what happens, anyone in uh, that area, within their turn, has to get out of it. They have to, first of all, use their move action get out of it. If their move action doesn't um, permit them, so if they are say you know, right in the middle and they can only move 10 meters and they move 10 and they're still not quite out of it, they have to then use their um, basic action as another move to get out. So if they are in there they have to get out of the hail of bullets. 
that there is no mechanic in the jumpstart kit at the minute to say that they can't everyone has enough movement that even if they're in a very bad position they will still be able to get out if they use both their movement and action and it's really good for getting people into cover now if they they can still be in the um, 25 meter square as long as they're in cover so if you start putting a hail of bullets down and they're standing beside a wall they can just duck in behind it and they'll be fine they're sheltered from the hail of bullets and they can then still take an action if they've only used their movement they can still act as normal but they have to get out of the hail of bullets so we talked before that there's head armor and body armor let's say you want to go for the head you want to make a headshot you can call the shot you can say i want to shoot him in the head and that's fine but you get a minus six penalty to your aim so because it's a smaller target whenever you do your roll you'll have to take a minus six penalty so let's say we're using uh, this assault rifle this one here and we'll say again that he's uh, he rolled a one so we're using this top deck of skills so we're going to use his marksman which is plus six and his reflexes which is eight now because i'm aiming for the head i get a minus six penalty which essentially negates his marksmanship bonus so it's just an eight plus a roll there's another eight 16. in the range that we are working at the difficulty is 15. he still hits happy days he hits him in the head now what happens any headshots that go through armor do double damage so we'll say that this guy is as armored as the net runner let's say he has 11 uh, head armor this assault rifle is 5d6 i think it's going to get through let's see six six one eighteen so that's 18 points now 11 of that is soaked up by the head armor so it means seven points hit him in the head now because it's a headshot it does double damage so actually it's 14 points of damage to the head if you've uh, uh, played cyberpunk 2020 before you might be thinking okay is is crippling limbs still a thing not quite not not in the same way that that you would be thinking and in the jumpstart kit it's sort of glazed over apart from cybernetics so for this we'll just say no um it's just double damage to the head he takes the 14 points of damage to the head he's just very unhappy right now now melee combat works exactly the same except it ignores half of the armor so if you get up close and personal and you have say rippers these things here which are essentially blades uh, in your arm and you want to use them to tear someone apart get up close and personal so it will ignore half of their armor rounded up now another good thing about melee weapons is you can attack twice with one action so if you think if you have uh, rippers or whatever else you can hit them with uh, left and right at the same time and give them a very bad day and the fact that it ignores half armor is very good for taking down armored opponents get up close and stab them is the way to go however brawling so just using your bare fists is automatically fails if the um, body part is armored so if you go and punch someone in the gut and they're wearing a bulletproof vest if you're just punching it negates armor or it is it is negated by the armor okay so last thing we're going to talk about particularly with the assault rifle three round burst so let's say there's a guy that's given given our our uh, solo a bit of trouble he wants to take him down he can fire a three round burst the way a three round burst works is that you roll your attack as normal so in this case it's his marksmanship which is six plus eight so that is 14 plus his d10 and that is another six so that is 20 and we'll say that the the difficulty to hit is still 15 so that's five for every point above the difficulty value or the defender's uh, dex and evasion skill depending on what the uh, the gm says if the person's trying to dodge out of the way an additional bullet hits the target up to three so because i got five over all three of the bullets hit and you roll them um as you would damage so it would be 5d6 times three it is a very devastating attack when it hits and it can put even some difficult enemies out of commission the only difference between this and some older rules that you may be aware of is the damage to the armor happens 
um, at the same time. So it's not one bullet hits and if it goes through the arm is decreased by one and so on and so forth. It is overall. So after all three bullets have hit, if one of them got through the armour, it's decreased by one. And if all three of them got through the armour, it's still only decreased by one point. All the bullets hit at the same time, the damage is the same. Um, that's different from Cyberpunk 2020. Um, 2020 would have been, um, if three bullets all went through, it would decrease by three. That has since changed. That's a difference um, in this. That may change in the core rulebook, there, but we'll, we'll see how it goes. So that's it. That's the gist of basic combat. There are a lot more um, sort of complex and fun things that you can do, but they are sort of just um, ability checks. If you want to do something really cool, just say to your GM and they'll make a quick decision and go, okay, well, give me a such and such check and they'll run through that for you. But you now know the basics of how to get down and dirty in Cyberpunk Red. Thank you.